Hello future MDs, this is the part 3 of Chemistry Rational of NMAT Practice Set 2019. Bale nandito yung solutions and explanations for numbers 41 to 50. Links to part 1 and part 2 of this review are in the description below. Again, I would like to thank Simon Pecho, my chemical engineer friend who helped me make this video. Actually, siya talaga yung nag-aral and um, nag-discuss dito. If you find this video helpful, please subscribe to this channel and like this video. Thank you so much. Let's start. Problem number 41. What is the classification of the carbon atom that is bonded to the OH group in menthol as shown above? So to solve this problem, dapat i-indicate natin yung carbons natin. So first na i-indicate natin yung carbon attached to OH. So yan. Then, yung mas importante, yung surrounding carbons ng carbon na may OH group attached to it. So, ilan yan? Dalawa. Since dalawa yung na-count natin, we can say na yung menthol natin ay secondary alcohol. So, yung C na attached doon ay secondary carbon. So, B yung sagot natin. Problem number 42. Which of the following properties of hydrocarbons increases as the number of carbon atoms in the hydrogen chain increases? So, meron tayong density, boiling point, at melting point. So, to solve this problem, dapat alam natin yung nangyayari sa density, boiling point, at melting point pag tinaasan natin yung number of carbon atoms. Pag tinaasan natin yung carbon atoms, ang mangyayari sa density ay tataas din. Kasi, tumaas yung molecular weight natin. And then, pag tumaas yung molecular weight natin, since dependent siya sa mass, tataas din, siya sa, tataas din yung mass natin. Therefore, tataas yung density natin. Since, proportional din yung mass sa density. Next naman, yung boiling point and melting point natin. So, ang mangyayari, pag tinaasan mo yung number of carbon atoms, mas dadami yung London dispersion forces involved sa CH bonds natin. Therefore, tataas yung boiling point and melting point natin. So, ang sagot natin sa problem number 42 ay D, 1, 2, and 3. Problem number 43. How many sp2 hybridized carbon or carbons is or are present in the, con in the compound shown above? So, to solve this problem, dapat alam natin yung ibig sabihin ng sp2, hybridized carbon. So, yung sp2 natin, meron siyang double bond. So, ngayon, bibilangin natin yung carbons na may double bond attached to them. So, we have 1, 2, and 3 carbons. So, isagot natin sa problem number 43 ay C, 3 sp2 hybridized carbons. Problem number 44, what is the name of the benzene derivative shown above? So to solve this problem, dapat alam natin yung structures ng choices natin. Now sa choices natin, meron na agad mali yung benzaldehyde natin. Kasi if you look at yung figure, ano yung atoms na meron siya? Meron tayong carbon and hydrogen. Eh yung benzaldehyde natin, meron siyang oxygen. Ngayon naman, ito yung structure ng iba nating choices, yung styrene, yung toluene, meron siyang methyl substituent, yung ethyl benzene, may ethyl substituent. Since yung ng problem natin is yung ganitong figure, styrene siya. So the only way to solve this problem is to memorize the structure of your, of the choices. So yung sagot natin ay A, styrene. Problem number 45. The molecular structures of three aromatic compounds labeled X, Y, and Z are shown in the diagram above. Which of the following shows the increasing order of acidity of the substances X, Y, and Z? So to solve this problem, kung mapapansin nyo, lahat ng compounds natin may benzene at meron ding COOH or yung carboxylic acid natin. X is your benzoic acid. So, yung benzoic acid, pag ginawa natin conjugate base, magiging benzoate. Yung benzoate, stable siya kasi meron siyang 
resonance. Ibig sabihin, yung electrons natin, pwede maglipat-lipat lang kung saan-saan. Itong double bond na to, yung pair ng electron niya, pwede lumipat dito. Yung ito, pwede lumipat dito. So, pwede ma-rearrange yung double bonds natin. At involved din dito yung O na may double bonds double bond na naka-attach sa C. So, mangyayari, yung conjugate base na yan ay stable. And yung counterpart niyang acid ay strong acid. Next, yung Y naman. Yung Y natin, meron tayong NO2. Tapos yung NO2, electron withdrawing group siya. Ibig sabihin ng electron withdrawing group, nangunguha siya ng electrons. Yung electron withdrawing groups natin, pinapataas niya yung acidity nung compound natin. Therefore, we can conclude na yung acidity niya is higher than benzoic acid. Paano naman yung Z? So, yung Z, meron siyang OCH3 or methoxy. Yung methoxy, electron donating group siya. Yung ginagawa ng electron donating group, imbis na manguha ng electrons from the benzene, ang ginagawa niya, namimigay siya ng electrons. At ang nangyayari sa acidity ng compound, bumababa yung acidity. So, yung acidity niya ay mas mababa kaysa sa benzoic acid. So, kung i-order natin sila in terms of increasing order of acidity, we arrive at Z is greater than X and X is greater than Y. So, D yung sagot natin. Problem number 46. How many hybrid orbitals are present in a water molecule? So, ayan, kailangan natin i-drawing yung water natin. Now, if we look at our central atom, which is yung O natin, meron siyang four electron groups. So, may dalawa tayong single bonds, may dalawa rin tayong lone pair. Since four yung nabilang natin, ang sagot sa problem na to ay four hybrid orbitals. So, D. Problem number 47. Which of the following processes describes the formation of glycogen from excess glucose in the blood. So to solve this problem, the only way to solve it is dapat alam niyo yung definition ng choices natin. So sa ketogenesis, it deals with formation ng ketone bodies from fatty acids and ketogenic amino acids. Yung lipogenesis naman, it generates your lipids from or fats from fatty acids and glycogen. Yung glycogenesis natin, it produces glycogen from glucose. Yung gluconeogenesis naman, ano yung napoproduce niya? Glucose from a non-carbohydrate organic compound. So yung sagot natin sa number 47 ay C, glycogenesis. Problem number 48. Which of the following scenarios will allow a heterogeneous catalysis to occur? So we have one using iron, potassium, and aluminum to catalyze the reaction of hydrogen with nitrogen to yield ammonia at 500 degrees Celsius. Then we have two, using hydrochloric acid in catalyzing the reaction of ethyl acetate with water to form acetic acid. And three, using platinum to catalyze the reaction of carbon monoxide with oxygen to form carbon dioxide. So to solve this problem, Dapat alam natin yung concept ng heterogeneous catalysis and homogeneous catalysis. So yung catalyst ng heterogeneous catalysis, so heterogeneous catalyst yun, yung phase niya, iba sa phase ng reactants and products natin. So pag solid yung catalyst natin, dapat hindi solid yung reactant or product natin, pwedeng liquid or gas. Pag homogeneous naman, dapat pareho sila ng phase. Now, if you look at number 1, 2, and 3, yung sa number 1, yung iron, potassium, and aluminum natin, they are solid. Tapos yung hydrogen, nitrogen, at saka ammonia, they are gases. So, what can we say about the type of catalysis? It's heterogeneous catalysis. So, tama siya. In number 2, yung hydrochloric acid natin, liquid, then yung reaction ng ethyl acetate with water to form acetic acid, they all involve liquid din. So, 
Is it heterogeneous catalysis? Hindi. Now, yung 3 naman, using platinum to catalyze the reaction of carbon monoxide with oxygen to form carbon dioxide, yung platinum natin ay solid. So, yun yung catalyst natin, solid yung catalyst. Then, yung carbon monoxide, oxygen, at carbon dioxide, gases sila. So, heterogeneous catalysis ba to? Oo. So, yung sagot natin sa number 48, 48 ay C, 1 and 3A. Problem number 49. Which of the following characteristics is common to all lipids? So to solve this problem, i-check natin yung choices natin. Yung lipids ba, they contain long chains of CH bonds? Actually, hindi. Yung lipids natin, meron siyang non-polar, so may long CH bonds. Well, meron. Kaso kasi yung lipids, may polar component pa siya. So if you look at choice A, kulang siya. Kasi dapat merong polar component na nakalagay. Now, yung B, they have a glycerol, back, black, glycerol backbone rather. Tama ba siya? Well, partly, pero as a whole, if you're referring to all lipids, mali. Kasi yung glycerol backbone is for certain type of lipids lang, which is yung triglycerides natin. Kasi meron pa tayong isa, isa pang type ng lipid, yun yung wax natin, so, meron siyang long chain esters. Now, yung C natin, insoluble ba sa water yung lipids natin? Pag sinabing insoluble, hindi matutunaw. Yung sagot, oo. Kasi, yung lipids natin, meron siyang non-polar component, which makes it insoluble in polar water. So, yung sagot natin sa number 49 ay C. They are insoluble in water. Problem number 50. What structure of protein is present in the above fibrous materials? So, yung above fibrous materials na minention dito ay silk fibroin extracted from silkworms, keratin in hairs, feathers, and nails, and yung three collagen in tendons and bone matrix. So, to solve this problem, dapat alam natin yung definitions ng structures ng protein natin. So, yung sa primary it only deals with amino acid sequences. In sa secondary naman, meron ng confirmation involved. So, paano yung arrangement ng amino acids natin? It can be alpha helix or pleated sheets. Tapos yung example nila, for alpha helix, we have keratin. While for beta pleated sheets, we have fibroin. For tertiary naman, 3D shape yung pinapakita niya. Tapos, mabuti na rin kung i-discuss natin yung denaturation kasi yung sinasabi ng denaturation, no, nawawala yung tertiary and secondary structure via unfolding of protein. So, yung perfect example natin ng denaturation ay yung protein sa egg pag niluluto natin siya. Nag-denature, ibig sabihin from May certain conformation, may certain structure na yung protein ng egg na no, nagiging long strands na lang siya na nagpapakita ng sequences. So parang nagiging primary structure na lang siya. And finally, we have our quaternary. So, kumbaga para siyang combination of different tertiary structures ng protein na nag-aggregate to form protein complex. So yung example natin dito ay hemoglobin. Since... Ang tinatanong sa problem, yung structure ng silk, fibroin, keratin, and collagen, ang sagot natin ay secondary structure. So that is B. That's it. Thank you so much for studying with us. God bless sa NMAT nyo. I hope that you get your gold PR. Just in case pala na may corrections, please comment below para makorekt natin. Thank you so much.